Hey, Rufo, did you get that paperwork faxed out for the uh, guys that we sold? Great. Appreciate that. And we've received the, con the signed contract from the, uh, the new striker. Awesome. Awesome. That's really good news. Hello? Antonio Gonzalez, how's my favorite striker? No, no, I did call you. I just wanted to uh, tell you that we were going to miss you, uh, and I wanted to wish you luck in the Super League over in China. No, no. You know, we had no choice but to accept those offers. They, you know, all those clubs, you know, met your release clause of $51 million. Uh, you will be missed. Wait, what? You turned down their contracts. So you're sticking around? No, 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 no. I'm not upset about it. I, I, that's good news, I guess. I just kind of already spent that money. Hey guys, RC here, back with Football Manager 21. It's Club 4, Episode 5. And yes, we have had some business taking place here in the transfer window in January 2059. Some of it was business I'm going to regret, I think. But let's take a look. We do have a couple of players departing. Mario Diaz goes to Mallorca for $425,000. Uh, we had him, we got him from Mallorca originally as part of a player exchange. I don't know who that was. That was last year before my arrival, so I can't take credit for it. Uh, but uh, we had loaned him back to Mallorca and then now they've bought him. So they, why did they sell him in the first place? Why did we buy him in the first place? I have no idea because he's not very good. Ratings actually look good, but a 28, not good. Um, he was so far down the depth chart, 22 years old. I just didn't see him ever getting a shot at the club. So we have shipped him off. Uh, Julian Preto, uh, we do like him, but he had an attitude, a uh, really bad attitude, and um, wanted to leave. So we, we let him go. Uh, <laughs> we signed him for $29 million and have sold him on to China for $6.5 million. Uh, so we take a bath on him. Strangely enough, he was a regular uh, prior to last season and hadn't, uh, you know, well, this season just didn't fit into my plans and uh, wanted to leave. So we let him go. Uh, six and a half was all we could get. That was the highest bid. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, I needed to clear some wages anyway, trying to trying to work the finances. So, unfortunately, that's a fact of life. You're going to take a bath sometimes. I can always blame it on the previous <clears throat> management uh, for signing him for that much. That wasn't my fault. Uh, then coming in, uh, we did sign another young striker, Gabriel Larola from Laganas for 875000 He's not bad. He's only average, though, but he's 16. That's the whole thing. I was looking to try to build our youth up facilities a little bit. Uh, so we, we pay him you know, a little bit of money for him. I think there are some add-ons that I don't really understand because he was available for almost nothing. It was like compensation was zero. But then there were some fees or, or you know, uh, other fee charges uh, that you might have to pay if certain things transcribe. And it has to do with these young players. I don't really understand it, but I got him on the cheap, and we may have to pay some money later, uh, which may not be my problem. Uh, and then we got, a, <laughs> we got a $51 million release clause uh, matching bid on Antonio Gonzalez. 13 goals in 15 matches, playing very well. Um, he's had a couple of mad games here recently, but all in all, he has been really good for us. 11 goals last year, 24, 15. So he, he's been good. He came up in our system. I wanted to keep him. And yeah, they just came in and they, they 
we got a couple of bids in that 25 to 35 range, you know, just over his value. And I was like, man, no, no way. And then three clubs came in and matched his 51 million release clause, which is still there. I think we've got a contract offer. Uh, oh, no, he reject. We couldn't. We tried to renew his contract to get rid of that or raise it or something. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend uh, that contract. Let's do that. Boop. Um, but uh, he's rejected the bid. It just came in this morning uh, on, on today that he rejected the contract. So he is sticking around, which is a good thing, sort of. My thing is, I thought he was gone for sure. And being that we were halfway through the transfer window, I've already spent some of that money. Uh, we have signed Antonio Miguel Illaramendi. Uh, he is a 21-year-old German player. And going back to last episode, he's German. German, not Spanish. Quit. Quit with the racism. Uh, I really don't like that manager. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check out last episode. Couldn't believe it. Uh, anyway, striker. Uh, he's very, very good. Very good physicals. Good finishing, first touch. He can actually dribble the ball, pass. Uh, he can play very competently at a lot of roles. So he was my replacement. <laughs> he was my replacement for Gonzalez. And now we're going to have to figure a way to play both of them. I guess that's a good problem. The big deal is that took most of my transfer budget and put us all the way up against the wage cap. So... We'll figure out what to do. Uh, I have come to the realization that we are more of a selling club. I think we'll have to be, uh, just with the amount of money that we are typically losing. Now we have, you know, we just sold Prieto, remember, for six and a half. So if you back that out, we're actually about two million in the hole for this month, and we're three point eight million down for half the year for the half season so far. So we're projected to lose about seven or eight million dollars uh, before any prize money. So we'll have to worry about that. Uh, taking a look at the schedule, we've only played a couple of matches. We beat Real San Sebastian two to one in a league match, and uh, Linares in the second round of the Spanish Cup seven nothing victory. So thirteen nothing on aggregate. Is the Spanish Cup a real thing? Because I've never watched it or followed it. Now, the third round we're going to play today against Al Al uh, Alaves, and they are a Spanish first division side, not seven divisions below us. So that should equate to better competition. But I don't really recall scores of that ilk in the FA Cup, let's say. Just throwing that out there. All right, well, I have Aisha to play uh, off camera. We'll come right back for those highlights. If you like what I'm doing here, please think about reaching down and smacking that like button and subscribing to the channel for daily football manager content. And let's hit those highlights. Well, I'm not going to show you any highlights because there weren't any to show you. We end up in a nil-nil draw. Uh, we had 10 shots to their nine. Uh, 2.01 XG to 0.82. A couple of yellow cards there. Uh, so anyway, nothing to really see here. Just move on and go about your business. Uh, we're currently sixth in the table uh, with a game in hand. But a lot of clubs have already played today. So we're not doing badly. You know, not doing badly at all. Remember, we're supposed to fight bravely against relegation. We're into the Euro Cups. Ilara Mendy made his debut and six in a row uh, with the draw without a loss. Let's take a look at Ilan Marendi and see how he did a 6.4. So he needs to do a little bit better, but he's only been at the club for literally a day and made his debut. All right, let's get into cup action. And uh, that is only in four days. So we'll be without uh, Gonzalez in that as he's out injured for about a week. All right. Well, there's another deal. Brian Ibanez has had people after him for quite a while. Uh, valued at $14.5 million, 22-year-old winger striker. Uh, he's playing very well for us. <clears throat> and uh, another Chinese super uh, 
Division League has come in and matched his $33 million release clause. Hopefully he doesn't take it, but I'm not going to spend that money until I know he is gone for sure. The board have accepted the offer for Rafael Garcia. Oh man, do I challenge this? Okay, so this is this remember, this is a Bielsa journeyman. The board have accepted this, not me. This could be an issue where I might challenge this. And if they go against me, I could quit literally in the middle of the season. Beals has done that before, and it's usually when the board goes against his wishes. Now, is Garcia a guy I want to make that decision for? I'm going to pause the recording and think about that for a little while. He's really good. Let's Well, let's talk about it a little bit. He's really good, but we have Gonzalez, Ibanez, Ilaramendi, Enrique. Now, Enrique's more of a winger and central midfielder for us, right? Because he can't finish. Ibanez can finish, but he's playing a lot on the wing. So that moves Garcia up to number four in the depth chart. And Ibanez could be leaving. And he's played a lot of games. I mean, that's 18 appearances in the league out of 19 matches, even if it's just off the bench. He doesn't have a release clause. Let me trigger his extension clause. And you know what? Let me check one other thing. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. So before we took this job, remember we were thinking about taking a job in France, in Ligue 1, to try to dethrone PSG. There is a job available in Ligue 1 right now at Grenoble. I believe Grenoble is where Andre the Giant was from. I think I've heard that name before. Finances are only okay. They're well known. Good, tr superb training and whatnot. Uh, they've always been a League One side. Well, most years. 1960s back in League Two. But they've never won it. They finished second a few times. What happened to their coach? So they sacked this guy. They've had a lot of sackings. Now, where did Tim Arbrecker go? He is now at Man U. Oh, wow, Man United. Okay. I guess that's, that's a good reason to leave. Paul Dracci, he is unemployed. Wow, he's actually a really good coach. Where's he been at? Look at this. Wow. Botcham. And he's already gone from there. Interesting. Crystal Palace, Bayer uh, Leverkusen. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what's been going on here. Is the board that hard to deal with? Because he, he, he barely got a year. What about Grenoble is picked to finish fifth? And they're currently ninth. So, obviously, if you're not reaching Europe with this club, they're going to fire you. I mean, you know, that's a challenge I'm willing to take. But the fact that they're in the league I wanted to play in to try to dethrone PSG at this point. And remember, Beals is all about challenges and the city and everything else. So... I think this is a club that might appeal to him. They've never won. I mean, they, they won a Euro Cup 10 years ago, a Super Cup 10 years ago, seven years for the French Cup, but they've never won this league. That you know, They're in a league with a dominant club. Maybe, maybe. And, and again, I'm just looking at this because they are available right now. So if we would resign right now, then we could go after that job. And it may not matter. I just saw another email. You guys probably saw it. Oh, hello. Yes. All right. Well, I didn't even see that. So never mind. Uh, but anyway, we may come back and revisit that. Um, but that shows kind of the things I wanted you guys to see that because 
A, because I didn't realize that triggering that would cause that to happen, but how I'm having to try to think this save through, it's not just, oh, it's a better job. Yes, let's take it, because that's a traditional journeyman path. This is a lot of other working parts. So it may not matter, but I don't think... Let's advance a day, and let's go back. All right, Gonzalez and Garcia. All right, let's check. Does he still have... All right, the minimum release clause has gone up to 54 million. And Gonzalez is still at 51 million. So I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they come in at 51, there's not a whole lot I can do. But never mind. All right, well, let's get to the Alaves game unless something else crops up. So see, again, all these Chinese super clubs. Funny, they, they attack Spain pretty hard, but we never really see bids from them coming in uh, with English clubs. So that's, that's, a, that's a different challenge. Uh, Sagoba, he's been a regular starter for us. They are only in at $3 million over his value. I'm not feeling that. They do have a $39 million release. We're into 59. That's three years. I don't think I want to trigger his extension yet. But we are going to reject those. And here's another example. So Juan Pablo Santin, 21 years old. They have met his release clause. Uh, 16 starts, playing right under a 7. 6 assists. He's well-rounded. Oh, boy. I do not have an, ex uh, uh, an extension here. Uh, and I cannot talk to the board about this. Oh, because it meets his... The difference was this is a release clause. The other was it was too good to pass up. Okay, so I, uh, I hate to lose this guy, but nothing I can do there. All right, we're going to go with a... With Pernan in goal, a back four of Navarro, Fernandez, Kovac, and Martinez. Ibanez drops to the left wing today. Enrique and Segoba in the mid. Santine moves out to the right side. And a striker partnership of Garcia and Illaramendi. Uh, Nan Nanzik Nass is still out injured for about six weeks. Garay is suspended for this match. Mecca is suspended for this match. Gonzalez is out another three days before he returns to training. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to see who I'm going to put in my strike partnership. That is going to be an interesting thing. Uh, and we're, we're going to end up having to get rid of one of our goalkeepers. Uh, Anaki Martinez struggling. Ibanez unhappy to be playing out of position. You know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. All right. Most of them seem motivated. I just rendered the uh, Real Madrid match from to open the season and uh, was reliving that. Enrique takes a crack. That goes wide of the mark. And now we've got Al Alaves on the attack. It says they're red, but they just have a single red stripe. Here's Illa Ramendi, the first time you've seen him. That's an offsides. That was not an offsides. I was positive that was offsides. We'll take the goal. I'm pretty sure he was offsides. I'm pretty sure he was offsides. Do they have VAR in the Spanish First Division? We'll find out here. I'm... Boy, wow, that was close. He was not offsides. I was wrong, thank goodness. And we're up 1-0. That's good. Nine minutes in, and we've got the lead. Let's go ahead and encourage him some more. Well, where do you want me to play him? Who do you want me to bench? The guy that had the assist or the guy with the goal? <laughs> you just, I need him to play out there today. Near post. Oh, what a save by Trigero. 
I thought that was going in the bottom corner. That was a beautiful hitter. All right, Enrique gets turned around. They're coming up through the middle. All right, our defense forces them back out. You know, we've got our two banks of four back there in the box. And the header goes right into Pernin's hands, and thankfully he holds on to it. I'm not 100% sold on either one of these keepers. Oh, nice flick on header. Oh, beautiful ball out. Ibanez is in, and Illa Marindi, and he gets his first goal of the season. Not a debut goal because he did play uh, in that last match off camera. The one with no highlights just a second ago. So that's beautiful. So, But a goal in his first video, that's pretty impressive. And it's 2-0. And oh my goodness, the grandbaby is not happy this morning. That's, uh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> All right. Um, keep it up, guys. And let's get back to it. Let's give him some praise here in the second half. All right, there's Navarro, Enrique. Oh, that was a good attempt there. And then Ilamarindi offsides. All right, Santine's tired. Let's go ahead and pull him, and we'll bring on Domingo Cora. I don't know that we've seen much of him. He's 17 years old. This might be his debut. I don't recall him. I don't recall him playing for me yet, but that's good. Come on in, introduce yourself around, and let's make a positive impression. Uh, some good defense. I like the fact that they allow a little tackling, unlike in England, where that probably would have been two red cards on my guys. Especially with certain VAR officials, like Dean. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's a counter opportunity. I thought Enrique could close that down. Oliver just gets right through. And it just goes wide, hits the outside of the post. All right, let's encourage him. Try to keep him motivated here. Uh, looking down, Navarro's having a rough one. Let's go ahead and sub him off at the next opportunity. And we'll bring Alex Santos on for him. Three sub appearances on the season so far. Oh, Cora did not do a good job there. That's better. Okay, I don't know what that was. Right into Francisco's chest. Those guys must have like a Spanish vendetta against each other because it looks like he tried to like kill him from 30 yards away. I mean, he hit him dead square center. That goes in the side netting. And that's stereotyping. I get it that, you know, Spaniards have uh, this, this Latin machismo thing going on i get it i get it all right we got a lot of people really tired here let's bring on uh adria here he'll come on as the box to box uh let's encourage him some more it's certainly not a seven nil or six nil victory but it might could be if we're we hold on here. It'll be another Spanish Cup clean sheet. That'll be good. And it gets us to the fourth round, which is our minimum expectation. So that keeps the board happy. Gabriel over the top. Oh, a nice little deft header by Martinez. Back to Pernan. Luckily, Pernan didn't soil himself. Oh, big first touch, and he's taken down. He's going to be sent off with his second yellow. And I guess we didn't get anything on the set piece. Five minutes of stoppage time. And we'll walk out of here. Two nil winners. 15 to 10 advantage on shots. Five to two with on targets. XG was pretty close. But we made it count. So that is good. We're going to go outstretched arms. Happy with the results. And we are into the fourth round of which we have the draw here in a day or two. So let's get up to that and do our draw and see who we play next.
All right, we're here for the draw. So since there's only a handful of teams, we can do these one at a time. Uh, there are what? 16 teams here. All right. We'd like that one. Nope. We'd probably love that one. Nope. Anybody in here? Yeah, there are three second division sides, so maybe. No, we get Valencia, another first division. Of course we do. Of course we do. So let's see. Just out of curiosity, Real Madrid gets a third division. Gijon got a second division. Bilbao got a second division. Barcelona got a second division. Anybody want to say there's not any graft going on in Spain? Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. All right, when does that match take place? That's coming up. Did we come right back for that? We were going to do Real Madrid on camera until the Spanish Cup got in the way. Why don't we come back for Real Madrid highlights and Valencia for the next match? Guys, hit the like button, subscribe for daily Football Manager content, and thanks so much for coming by today. Bye.